What are you seeing amongst your client base right now in terms of trading activity? Is there still that sort of interest in crypto that we saw in the fourth quarter in terms of the trading volumes? Yeah, I think that, look, the trading volumes, as we've talked about before, are highly correlated to where the asset prices are. When the asset prices are going up, there are more people trading crypto. When the asset prices are coming down, there's fewer people trading. But in terms of account opening and so on, we're still seeing very healthy volumes there. We're very happy with the way the business is going. Um, as your previous guest said, it's a volatile asset class. And so I, I, I personally am not surprised about the volatility. Uh, and I do think the, the issues that he identified as to some of the causes are, are right. That the regulatory clarity being probably the biggest of, of, the, of the issues right now. So you operate an exchange, you operate a, a trading platform. I'm wondering, in terms of the, regula the regulatory uncertainty that you face, do you feel like it has increased yeah. over the past three months or so or decreased? Have you gotten contacted more by regulators recently? <laughs> Well, I, I think uh, we have been contacted more, and we're, we're doing much more outreach, um, and the clarity has not increased. I think the, the actions that, that have been taken to uh, you know, correct some of the fraudulent things that have been going on, that's been very healthy for the industry, right? Um, I, I think that clarity, though, is needed, and I don't think we're close to that, unfortunately. Um, and so we're working very hard with many of the regulators, both here in the U.S. and, and abroad, as to what that constitutes. And you, you will know we talked about before, we have a very robust framework we use for how we think about assets to list on our exchange. Um, but with that, you know, we can't apply that unless there's some clarity around, is it a security, is it a, is it, is it a utility, et cetera. We, we feel that there are many, many projects out there which are, which are utilities and should be able to be listed. Um, and there's some that look like securities and, and need, need to be treated differently. But, but some clarity is what is, 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 the, is the starting point for being able to show any progress on that front. So would you say that that was the number one um, headwind in terms of, of adding assets yeah. to be traded on your platform? If you get clarity on that, the sure. floodgates open for you? Yeah, look, we, we, would, we would like to list as many assets as possible, right? I mean, it's in our interest, too. It's in our traders' interest, too. Uh, but we, we have taken the, the, the tack from the very beginning of being the easiest to use, most trusted. And part of being most trusted is being the most compliant. And so where there's uncertainty, we are not listing assets. And so that, that's why we list the four assets that we do list, because there is certainty around those. And as soon as there's more clarity around some of the other assets, we will list them uh, as long as they adhere to our framework. And so, again, we're working very closely with the regulators to try and get to a sensible regulation around this space. I mean, the analogy I use is, look, it's a, it's a bit like 5G. It's going to happen. And I think the U.S.'s question is, are we going to be at the forefront of that and shaping the way this space evolves, or are we going to let it evolve outside the U.S. and then be subject to whatever direction it takes there. I think it's far better for us to be at the leading edge of how it's going to evolve. And that, and that would argue for sensible regulation here sooner rather than later. Hey, Asif, it's Brian Kelly. So I'd, on that note, actually, one, one of my takeaways from Blockchain Week in New York last week was that all the adoption is happening in Asia, where we're getting a lot of development here in the U.S., yeah. but the consumer adoption is happening in Asia. Are you seeing that same phenomenon from your seat? Yeah, I, I think that's right. So, so let, let's talk about what, what adoption means. You know, there's two phases of any new technology. There's the invest phase and the utility phase. We're firmly in the invest phase of this technology, and it just happens to be investing. But the utility phase, where people can actually transact in it, they can earn in it, uh, they can send it to each other, et cetera, much more of that's happening in Asia. Uh, and that's because they have more closed economies, they have more volatile uh, currencies that they deal with. It's just it, the, the value proposition is much tighter. And so if you look at our utility products, so we have uh, the Coinbase wallet, which you can, you can store and send crypto with, or earn, which is, uh, which is a way to actually earn crypto. Those things, those things have huge user bases, uh, m much of which is outside the U.S. Uh, as if, um, is there any iota of concern on your part that, that uh, regulators will come down and decide that something is a security um, versus a commodity and that would cause you to rethink what you have listed already on the platform? Look, I, I guess that there's a chance that that happens. I think, I think it's a very low chance. I, I, I really do believe the amount of dislocation that would cause, not just to us, but the entire crypto space, is going to be enormous. And I think it would just, it would force a lot of projects and people, frankly, to move offshore. Um, and like I said, it's, it's a bit, to me, it is a bit like 5G in that it is going to happen. And you know, the choice in front of our regulators is, do they want to be at the forefront of shaping how it's going to happen, or are they going to let others decide in the way in which it's going to evolve? And I think that would be dangerous if they let others decide. All right, we do want to get to uh, our Bitcoin alert. Asif, you've got a big announcement that you want to share. First on CNBC, some of it leaked earlier. That was the acquisition of Paradox. Some of it did not. So what is your announcement? Yeah. 
Yeah, so look, you know, I'll, I'll, you and others have always been asking us, what, when, when and why um, can you not list more assets? Why can you not let us trade more things? And I'm delighted to announce two things today that are going to significantly increase the amount of assets that people can trade on Coinbase. The first is the launch of Coinbase Pro, which is an active trading product, it's brand new. It is a set of institutional grade products and services, as well as direct market access. Uh, it's a, an evolution of our GDAX platform, which we launched three years ago and has been super successful. But GDAX, we're now basically splitting in two. Um, the Coinbase Institutional Suite of Products, which we announced last week, and Coinbase Pro now for the, institution, for the individual investor. And then secondly, we, we bought Paradex, which is the leading relay in the world. And this will allow you to trade literally hundreds and hundreds of tokens from your own wallet. Um, and we are, we're actually going to make that compliant with the U.S. rules. Uh, and so day one, it's going to be available for our international clients to trade uh, all these tokens. And then as soon as we can, we, will, we are going to turn it on in the U.S., where our U.S. customers can also trade all these tokens that they want. And so, you know, we're greatly increasing the number of things that you can trade. We're doing it in a compliant way. Um, and we're, we're just delighted that this, this, this will significantly enhance the proposition for our, our customers in terms of what they want to trade and how they want to trade it. But again, that goes back to the regulatory and clarity. You've got the token trading available yes. for international traders, but not available to the U.S. traders. Yeah, so, so we're, gonna, we're actually going to set this up where it's in, in the U.S. it's going to be a bulletin board. So it will be, it, it's not an exchange, it doesn't look and act like an exchange, it's not a, it's not a matching engine, it's, an, it's a bulletin board. And in that way, we think, just like, just like bulletin boards work in equity markets, we will be able to offer these assets for people to be able to trade through a bulletin board mechanism um, in the U.S. and it'll be slightly different outside, but but we will allow you know we will get this to be compliant, and we will allow our customers to have access to it uh, as soon as as soon as possible. Hey, it's, this is Brian Kelly again. So Paradex, as I understand it, is what we call a decentralized exchange, which essentially lets you to trade any type of uh, uh, token. So are you going to have particular tokens? Which ones will you start with? Will it be a basket? Yeah, so, so it's not, let me, please let me correct you, it's not a decentralized exchange. It's not an exchange in that sense. It is a, it is a bulletin board. Um, and that is, that is a very, it's a very, I'm, I'm being pedantic about it because the U.S. regulator views exchanges one way and bulletin boards another way. This is a bulletin board. And if it's, and if it's a bulletin board, you can actually offer a much broader suite of products there, uh, tokens, if you want, uh, to trade. And so our hope would be that most of the tokens that are already trading on Paradex, we will, we will be able to, to offer in the U.S. in a compliant manner. All right, Asif, we're going to leave it there. It's always a pleasure having you on Fast. Great. Appreciate it. Asif Hirji of Coinbase. What do we, the announcement basically, right, going after the institutional investor, this is what Everyone's investors waiting have for. been waiting for, right? The, the flood of money to come into this space. Well, again, I, I'm not sure how much of this has been deployed yet. I, I think there's a lot of people kicking the tires. There's a lot of big institutions that can't do anything until they have custody uh, laid out. Brian's talked about the different ingredients here. So um, I, I think guys like Coinbase are doing everything they can do to have the infrastructure and have the roads built. Uh, and I think, you know, the, the law and the trading here I can't speak to because, frankly, I think the people that are in the market right now are the ones that are doing all the activity. We haven't gotten a lot of new money. Mm -hmm. Uh, I asked a question about securities versus commodities because they had that discussion at Blockchain Week about Ether. Right. And Ethereum's already listed on the Coinbase platform. Ether, of, there, of all of those that are listed on Coinbase, could be viewed. Ether is probably the one that everybody has questions about. Right. Um, is there any concern in your view that Ether could be considered a security? At very the little. Day? Okay, very little. Ve very okay. little, and here's why. I, listen, we can go back to the history of Ethereum and the initial coin offering and how that was done, but the way that Ether functions today, it truly is the fuel for the decentralized internet. So it, it no longer acts as a security. It acts just like a commodity, just like oil does. So I, I would be surprised if Ether became a security. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.